Okay, so hey, it's me, Valerie, and um, and tonight we're going to do this um, cute little castle, and it's from a painting by Lita Judas, I think is what it says. Um, it's super cute, and it's very illustrative, illustrative, I don't know, um, so that it sort of looks very storybook-like. So I think that'll be fun. And so let's get started. And then what I have for paint is, let's see, there we go. Um, I have three whites. One's gonna go with the blue, one's gonna mix with the brown, and one's gonna be just like the snow. So I think you probably want three of those. And then I have just a tiny, tiny bit of yellow, even less red if you can get away with it because you just need it to make an orange for the windows. If you have orange, you could just use orange. Um, I have a little bit of green. If you don't have green, you know, get yourself a little extra yellow and you'll just take a little tiny bit of blue and then you can make your green from that. And that's just to put a little bit of green in these trees. And so you don't need much, okay? And then I have, um, I have the umber for my brown tonight. It's a little cooler, a um, little more blue toned, but you can use whatever brown that you have. And if you have a gray, or you already have, like if you have an assortment of colors and you already have some kind of light tan or something like that, um, you know, this is pretty light. So if you, if you, um, and we're gonna use it for that. So, you know, and if you want a red brick castle or you want a lime green castle, you make it whatever color you wanna make it, but that's what I've got, okay? Sound good? All right, let's do it. This is how we're gonna start. I, Try this a bunch of different ways, and my immediate re my immediate gut reaction is to start with the castle. But I have come to realize that starting with the trees actually makes more sense. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do. And the the um, you know what you're trying to do is you know you're gonna have a big tree here, you're gonna have two smaller trees here, and then it's fitting in there behind it. And um, if you happen to make a teeny tiny castle, your trees are just gonna look really large, which is fine, unless you make really small trees. And if you happen to make um, a really big castle, your trees look smaller. But a tree like this, a, um, a fir tree, could be any size, where it doesn't always work so well with like a bear tree that's like maybe a maple or something the proportions matter a little bit more. So it's, I think it's pretty easy to go either way with this. So what I'm gonna do is start with, um, I have these three whites. I think, I don't know, I might wind up needing more paint, but I'm just gonna take a little bit of blue. It's, it's to do the, a color kind, I want, yeah, a color kind of like this. It's very, you know, it's the snow at night. So I'm not gonna take very much blue and I'm gonna put that in my white. Um, if your blue is super bright, like, you know, oops, I can't, you can't even see it. This way. Oh, it's up here. You can't even see it, but you'll see it when I put it on the paper or I'll make it darker, but make it kind of on the light side. And if your color is number one, if you make it too dark, add more white. Cause it'll make, make, make sense for you to make it as light as you can right now. Um, if it's also super, super bright, take a tiny bit of brown, put that in there, and that'll just kind of gray it up a little bit, unless you like it like that. But if you think it's a little too garish for your picture, then start with that. Uh, I think you're gonna be, I don't know. Uh, I will make it a little darker so you can see it. So we're gonna start with the tree. Let's start with the one on the left, this one right here. And what I want you to see is that it starts very close to the top of your page. And then one side goes right out to the side. And then the other side is just, you know, mostly coming down, but it'll come in a little bit. But you don't wanna go, I guess what you could do is say, this is about a third of the picture. So maybe you wanna say there's one, two, three thirds. So it's about here and you're gonna be aiming for about like, maybe like right here. Yeah, I can see that, okay. And I'm gonna start here. And the neat thing about the trees in this picture is that they, they they curve, they're kind of like, that's what makes them look sort of cartoony or whatever, that they have a, a bend in them, okay? So we want that, I think. If you don't, you don't. So I'm gonna start up top 
And first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a dot there and I'm gonna go over to the side of my page about here. So I'm gonna just come over, okay? And then the other one, you know, very tall and slim kind of, I'm gonna come down and then I'm gonna sweep it to the right a little bit. So I'm a little bit darker, I think, than what you want. Um, add a little bit of white if you're a lot darker than this. All right, and then I'm gonna just make a little zigzaggy around the bottom. The next thing I want you to do is we wanna mark a little spot where we think the bot, the snow is gonna be on the bottom of the castle. So it's probably gonna be somewhere in here. Like this is probably too high, this is a little low. So somewhere in between, you're just gonna make kind of a little scoop like this, which is the other third, right? One third, two thirds, there's your other third. Then um, I'm gonna do the outside tree first, the bigger one. So, you know, about midpoint, I mean, if, if, you, if I'm going with this, it's about midway. So there's about midway on my picture. That's about where the top of that tree is. And it goes over here towards the side. And then you start again at the top and kind of just bring it that way a little bit. And if you round it down, it's gonna to help to have it show, um, seem um, cone-like, all right? And then I have another little one that's, that's just in there. And if you can't, if it's, if you don't have much room, then just kind of poke it in behind. And if you have a lot of room, you can add more trees or you can um, have it sit by itself. But the same thing, it's gonna start maybe about right here, come in over like that, maybe like that. We are going to now take a bigger brush and I want you to just sweep in a layer of light blue on here. What our plan will be is we'll paint them with a light blue. We'll come in and we'll poke in a little bit of um, a kind of a light for screen. And then after that dries, we're gonna lay a little bit of, of white on top. Okay, and so that ultimately the, the snowy boughs are on the top of things. So don't, don't take a lot of time. I've got a bigger brush like this. I'm gonna add a little bit, I'm gonna add a little more white to mine because it's a little dark. So anyway, I'm just gonna sweep this in. You kind of wanna work up and down like that. All right. And if you wanna make your tree, you know, with zigzags and, branches and things like that, you can go ahead and do it or we'll sort of, we'll sort of give it a little more shape as we were, as we, when we come back to it. We don't want to spend too much time on these trees because it's really not where your concentration has to be used up. That'll kind of be on the castle. So, and everything else is pretty, pretty easy. So we'll do that. And then we ought to put some on the snow bank itself as well. And we'll come in and we'll highlight these spots later. So put sweep in a little bit of light blue on the ground here but work side to side and that'll help to have your um you know and if you're a little more experienced and you want to you know push a little more dark in the corners as you're going along and doing it I mean of course you know go to do whatever you want do whatever you want this is cute though I like this picture and I thought it was uh, you know the most wintry one, pretty soon we're gonna be sick of some this much snow. We're gonna use a brown. So get a, and get a smaller brush. Um, I have, I think I'll use one about like this. Can you see it? Pretty small. And I like a flat, but if you like a rounded brush, then that's great too. We're just gonna make, I've decided we're just gonna make a light brown. Okay, and so we're just gonna add a little bit of white to, um, or we'll add a little bit of brown to our white and we're gonna make a very, very light brown. You can make it gray. If you have black and you really wanna make it gray, I mean, that would work too. Um, you can add blue to your brown and make it a little gray, um, but I think this will work fine. If, you, if you're using the umber, that's fine. And if you're using sienna, the like redder one, that's, that's fine too. So the first coat, you know, we'll get it drawn on there. And then if you want to play around with the color, it's kind of a little hard to explain because there's, I, I think it might even be a watercolor. It, it's so it's got a lot of ranges of different shades in there. And I figured it'd just be easier to just do it that way. So I'm going to take um, just a little bit of brown like this and I'll put it in this pile of white over here. So the color is going to be pretty light. Start light. 
you can always make it darker. All right. And the, if, if you want to get these windows in here and maybe even a little bit of window pane, you don't want to be too small. All right. We'll start um, with a line right here. So get, you can take this line and you can put it right over there near your um, tree. Okay. Depending on how much room you have. But this part is almost the whole section. There's just a little tiny bit that we want to fit in here. Okay. And, and part of the reason why I want to do the tree first is because I want you to make, make room for this. And you don't know how to make it if you do the castle first. All right. Then we'll come over a nice, you know, give myself a pretty good sized turret there. All right. And you're going to round, let's see how tall. Hmm, yeah, probably, you know, this is about halfway. That's about halfway. So a little, a little bit higher than, than the, you know, if you top to bottom, if you find the middle, you want to go a little bit higher than that, I think. You know, it's all relative. But, and then what you want to do, I would start in the middle and make a point a little bit higher and then kind of round it down that way and round it down that way. If you start on one side and you're not super symmetrical, it will be lopsided. So easier to just, just start there and do that. That always helps. All right, we might as well, let's, if, you know, we can cover, we'll cover this all up. So we want a nice tall turret, I mean, roof. So find the middle and go straight up. That way it won't be lopsided. Although this one has a little, if you want it to, curve then then do that too okay and you're gonna come down and then you go a little bit wider than the uh than the um i mean for the roof a little bit wider than the tower and then there's a little roof right here so you bring a little a line over here and hopefully you can squeeze in this little bit if you can't squeeze it in it's not that important okay but it's a little square and then it has a tall, skinny little roof on there. There's also this little one that sits right there on the, um, right on the edge of this. So you find a place here and you wanna build that to the, to the left. All right, but give yourself room for the, um, the roof again. So you start down maybe here, here. There you go. I think we'll do the windows first because if we run out of room for what happens at the top of the, 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 if we run out of room for that, it doesn't matter. You can always squeeze something in, you can always make it bigger, but it'll be hard if we run out of room for our window. So let's start with this one right here and it touches, you know, it's right down. It's like the snow, like there's a walkway here, but the snow is fresh and it's gone into the doorway a little bit. So what I would do, and this is the top of that in this case is, you know, about, about halfway. So it's going to go right around there. And what I would do, we have this nice light color is that you're going to put a line here and they're very tall and skinny, right? But put yourself a nice thick line here and then do the parallel one over here and then round them. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do this little piece right here. And what I'll have you do is this, you know, the same tan. Yeah, I guess what we're gonna do is cut out the other pieces. So yeah, just to, if you start again in the middle, right? Then you bring that line this way and bring that line this way. They curve a little bit, but you're a little bit, I don't know, more likely to get it even. If you have, if you want to have yellow inside these windows, then you probably want to make windows big enough to squeeze a little something in there. If you don't care and you just want to make them dark, but if you want them bigger, then now would be the time, okay? And we'll paint in this upper part with the light brown. This is pretty light. Let's all, no, that's, that's all we're gonna do with that. All right, now what you're gonna do is take a little bit more brown and make a darker, um, you don't want it 
full strength Brown at this point. I don't think, I don't know they ever going to, but um, a darker Brown. Let's see. This is my, this is my light one. So that much darker, somewhere in between. And you'll, you'll need some paint actually, some paint most of the castle like this. So what I wanna do is to make this little crown piece that's right here. It's kind of a neat little thing to do. So either have um, a pretty small brush or you know this little flat size one. And what you do is take this and make a little line like this and then leave us equal size space and another equal size space. Same thing over here. Okay. And then what you're gonna wind up doing is you're gonna go along the bottom and you're gonna paint this lower part of the castle with this color. And it's gonna look like, and you're gonna go around the, um, the trim on these windows. And it's gonna look like how this has those little, those little bites there. This might be a little dark, but. So then just go ahead and you probably, and then I think you're gonna fill in, well, the only one that's gonna be tricky is this little piece here. So probably make this piece lighter, that little tur turret that's sort of on the side. Oh yeah, and you, and you wanna go over the line on the outside of the castle on the right side there. All right. Okay. Also gonna put some dark brown here too. that and then this piece it's actually kind of dark Oh, I want, so I'm going to put the turret that's on the side of the big tower um, in just like a some kind of mixture in between. Okay, that one right in there. So don't forget to put um, a little darker bit right under the the roof here. You know, the thing we want, the, the real reason to get the darker brown is to help make the this little um, texture or whatever there. So other than that, you're kind of just fiddling around with whatever shade you think it ought to be. And really, um, you know, in reality, if it's nighttime, which means dark blue sky, I don't know how this castle would be that light unless it's getting light shined on it from, you know, what do you call that? Like landscape lighting or something or the neighbor's castle or something like that, because it would generally be that the windows would be very bright and the whole castle would be really dark. The, you know, and the, the, the turret where the snow would be would be kind of bluish. So of course it's not reality, but part of the reason why we're putting it in at night is so that the, the inside looks so cozy and warm with that yellow. And then also so we can show snow by having the sky dark enough so we can show it. Okay, so let's take, um, so I don't forget, let's put light blue on the, um, the roofs, on the three roofs, if you have three. 
All right, and that's going to be the same color that you know you're using down here. That's all sort of like snow and shadow. So I'm going to take some of this. I've got my big brush for this part. Um, you know, we are are going to paint. That might be a little dark. Um, you know, you're going to paint around the outside of it again, again anyway. So, oops, that's very dark. Okay, so here and then this guy right over here. Don't worry about being super careful because again, you're going to redraw the shape when you paint the sky. So you don't have to be too particular about it. And then probably we'll plop a little bit on at the end anyway. So it looks snowy. There, all right. All right, and then the next thing to do is to put some, um, yellow or orange or purple or whatever you want to be the lighting going on inside the castle and if you want it to seem like you know it's up in the windows or it's nice and warm there you can this one just has one but you can put it in these little windows or you can just paint those dark with the dark brown and leave them like that too i don't I, whatever way you want to so just remember that the red is a lot stronger than the yellow and you're going to hardly need any paint at all so don't don't put the yellow into the red it'll just get swallowed up so just take just a tiny tiny bit and like again if you have orange i'm just gonna take barely any like that put in my yellow okay that's just how it works just some colors are just a lot stronger and if you like this, this is gonna look kind of like that. And if you um, want more red, put more red. And if you want, if you have the reddish brown, you could use that or you could put white in there too, but um, it will definitely make it very bright. So I'm actually, I might put a little tiny bit more red. Oh my God, let's see. Yeah, and I'm just gonna put it in there and I'll probably redo this light brown so I'm not gonna worry too much about um, painting over it. That's too much work for me with this brush. It's too... Okay, and also, you know, it would kind of glow. Oops, that's a little too much. Let's see. We are gonna put a little bit of yellow on the snow. If you're really, if your snow here is really light and you wanna just take, um, you kind of take your brush and you kind of wipe off most of the paint and then you could just brush it on there a little bit. The only thing is if, you're, if your snow is really blue and you go to put the orange on top, it's gonna look, um, it's gonna kind of look grayish. It's not gonna look bright. So I'm going to wait for mine and do it at the end when I make this, when I put a little bit more white on the snow. Okay. But if you, it is there, if you want to, if you think about that. So what we want to do, you know, if you look at this tree, you know, there's very little green on here. One thing is, is it's kind of in, in tiers. So it's like here, 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 here. And um, the hard thing I think for this is, we do want, you do want a green that's lighter. You want some white in the green. If it's very, very dark, it's gonna, um, I think it won't look as much like this one. Hers is, hers is pretty, pretty light. And so I have my green here. Um, the easiest way to, there's a whole bunch of ways to kind of make this green a little more forest green. Um, I can take a little bit of brown, I can take a little bit of red or blue, I can put all those things in the green and whatever, or maybe the green's good the way that it is. I think I'll just take a little tiny bit of my brown and put that in the green. I definitely want it to still look green, but that'll make it a little more foresty. Um, I can use, I'm not gonna need a lot, so I'm gonna take some of this, the color we've been using for the snow and I'm just gonna add that because that blue won't hurt. All right, so it's a little bit of a, um, 
It's not mint green because it should look a little more dull than that, but it is light. Okay, and this is one of those things where the globs are pretty big. Okay, so I don't know that you want like little teeny tiny spots like this because it's what it is is it's like the snow is on top of the branches, but there's that little bit that you can see underneath. So it's kind of random. So I like to take my brush and like hold it like this instead of like this because I'm kind of controlled. If I take the end of it and I also have a, got a little water to thin it out because that'll make it a little more like this watercolor look. And I'll take it like this and it definitely they're gonna be darker down here where it hits, there might be a little here, okay? And I'm just gonna, I'm sort of, I mean, you do your own style. Um, maybe think, imagine that you were, you were writing in cursive when you didn't know how to write, write in cursive, which may for some of you still be the case, but you know how you would go, you know, circles, and that looks a little like that. Kind of big, big spaces between, I think. And you could do a little bit and then give a little gap, just little lines. You can flare it out a little bit. And that, are you going to do that? And You'll do that on all three of the trees. You know, it's and maybe a little bit smaller marks on the on the um, the smaller trees. And remember, we're going to go back in and we're going to add more white again. So we'll have this give this time to dry, and we'll add a little on top. So if you put more than you think you you're not crazy about it, don't worry. It's just sort of a um, a step that helps to. It adds to everything later on. Next is the sky. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna paint our sky in. That'll give the green some time to dry. And then we'll, we'll um, I think then we'll do touch up the, the tree, I mean the castle if it needs it and put like a little grid on the window that kind of thing. And then, and then we'll put some white on and we'll add a little white to the like things to like in the snowflakes. So it's not, so it's just a couple of things. So, you know, with the, with the sky, depending on the blue that you have, I mean, you, you definitely want it dark, but you know, if I take this blue that I have, I think it's, I don't know what they call it, like primary blue or something. And I put it on here just the way that it is, you know, that's, that's probably the right darkness, but it's a little too, um, it's a little bright, which two layer, and the other thing is two coats will, will be helpful, but, uh, cause a lot of acrylic paint is a little see-through, but what I'm gonna do is take, I mean, you could make it a little purple. You could take some red, you could take what you have a red there and add to it. That may give it a little more of a purple. Maybe you have a dark blue, it's called like Prussian blue, um, but, uh, or, yeah, I don't think you'd want your green, but so I'm gonna take a, like a scoop of this brown, Actually, maybe not too much, just a, just a little bit on the top. I'm gonna to put that in there and I'll show you the difference. Whoops. You know, it's more like that. You know, and if I want it lighter, you know, I can put a little white with it, but it's, I like that grayish color more than, than that bright blue color. Okay, so what I would do which is what, what I always recommend is to take a little bit smaller brush and get that blue color. You're going to need probably quite a bit. And then take your smaller brush and outline your things before and then take a big one. So when I do this tree now, this is when I can kind of reshape it. So say I wanted to have a little like a little flare in and out. I can kind of draw it in there like that so that when I fill in the rest of it, it's just gonna show that shape a little bit. Um, you know, and if something's a little lopsided, you know, this is where I would, you know, I'm gonna draw around these things and then I'll just fill in the rest of it. Let's see. So on this side, maybe I cut in a little bit.
if you don't get the right, if you don't get exactly the blue that you want for the sky right now, a second coat of, of paint for all of it is always, always helpful. And there is nothing in the sky except the snowflakes. So you could always just paint over the snowflakes and put them on again. Um, if you wanted to put a second coat of blue, if you're not crazy about the blue you get the first time or it's a little streaky or whatever. So let's see. Yeah, so on my little tree here, you know, I can make a little, these are kind of things I always like because everybody does the tree so different. There's that. All right, so a little, a little bit of brown in my blue, you could put red in there. You can put a little, if you have a darker one, you can just use that. You can put a little white, you could use purple. You could put purple and blue together. Let's see. Oh, I didn't go around everything. Let's see. Yeah, let's let's take a little brush, and um, if you want to touch up anything on your castle, like this would probably be a good time to do it. Okay, I'll tell you this about little brushes: is that a brush that's little, that's little, but it's very long and skinny. Okay is great when you're doing just like very, you know, and you maybe you can rest your arm on there and you're doing something very, very careful and you want that like, you know, a lot, a skinny, skinny line. The problem with it is that if you're gonna paint a lot of things, let's say you're gonna paint a whole bunch of snowflakes, is that every time you push it down, it bends. So it's a lot harder to like outline something with, a, I think with a long skinny brush because there's so much wiggling involved. So frankly, um, sometimes I have these little ones that are all, let's see, stubby little broken ones. And the thing is, is when they have very few um, bristles at the tip and it's very short, it's kind of like using a felt tip marker they, that it doesn't really have much bend and sway to it. So it's, you can really kind of control what you're doing. Um, the trick is getting something that's, you know, also kind of comes to a sort of a point, but I like to have them, even if you get a, um, a flat brush that's with a, just less bristles, but it's short. I like a short one because it, it's easier to control what I'm doing. Um, but remember you get a, like you mess up a line that you like, say when we're doing the um, grid or something on the windows, you mess it up. You don't like it, you know, for number one, you know, who really cares? It's not brain surgery. And the other thing is that you can always paint over it and try it again. Use it. All right. So one of the things I want, I want to put up just, I'm pretty good with how this looks. I'm pretty good with my out, outline here. I probably want to accent this, this little tower a little bit, maybe that one back there. So I'm going to put, you make a little bit, um, I'm going to use the dark brown, but it's still a little too dark, just straight out of the bottle. So I'm still gonna add a little bit of white with that or just, you know, the brown that we had before. You know, so what you'd ideally like as you, as you get more experienced is that you kind of on your palette will have like a color and you'll have a whole bunch of different shades of it just handy and you can put them in wherever you want. All right, um, once you've, if you've got a little brush and you mix your paint, wipe your brush off because 
it gets all over it and that sort of defeats the purpose of using the little one. So I've got a dark and I'm gonna put a little bit right underneath my roof. Probably do that on all of my little roofs. This one has a little dark window back there. I'll put a little window. You think you want to use black, but there are really very few times when you really want black in your painting. There's times, but they just not as many times as you might think. Um, this one has three windows. So I'm gonna start right in the middle and make a long, because castles have long skinny windows. So you don't let out all the heat, I think, I don't know. Tall ones like that, maybe a little accent here. This would be probably straight across. It's probably about horizon level. You know, and I can take that brown and kind of, like I said, sort of like using a felt tip, kind of mush that into the wall a little bit. All right, and I mean, this is a part that you could definitely fiddle around with for a while, but all right, let's see, might put a little there. I'm gonna outline my windows a little bit. I still I'm going to put a little bit of accent around um, my stone trimmed windows, whatever, I don't know what you would call it. Um, this one actually shows the, in, the thickness of it by having, if you have enough room and you bring a brown line down on just the left side, you could do it on, the, if you did it on both, it would mean that you were standing right in the middle. But if you're a little to the side, you see one part side of it. It starts at the top, because you're gonna see the underside of that doorway, and then would come down one side to kind of show the thickness. That and maybe a little along the bottom. I'm kind of almost drawing with this marker. I mean, with this um, brush, because it has it holds so little paint that I don't get too much, which I think is good too. All right. If you, whenever if you don't have a tiny tiny brush, you can always get a toothpick or something, and you might even break the toothpick because the tip of a toothpick doesn't hold very much paint, and like you won't be able to do anything. But if you broke it, you could get have make it hold a little more pain. So to do these mullions in the, the other thing you could do, I'm gonna actually, I'll do it. I'll draw, I'll paint one and I'm gonna draw one. Is, you know, definitely wanna clean your brush. You wanna get a tiny, tiny little bit of paint on the tip. And I always kind of start in the middle. I don't know why there's a grid on this, but there is, I don't know, we'll put it there. I'll start in the middle. I'm gonna make a little line here. And if your brush kind of dry brushes when you're doing something really tiny, just don't go back and over, do it. Don't brush, 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 brush. Just streak it. And if it doesn't show, your brain will say, oh, I know what that is. That's a line. So don't worry about it. Um, and then I want to start in the middle of my doorway is where I'm going to put that line there. The other thing is, is you could use a, a Sharpie or even just a pencil. Uh, this one has something fancier. So it has a line in the middle. Um, one that comes down like this. You know, and I mean, I don't know. You probably you can't hardly see it anyway. But if you really want to do something cute on the windows, it might be worth doing it with a pencil because you, you know, you can only do so much with a brush. Um, I'll start right in the middle, bring that one way and the other way. So we're just gonna put, we're just gonna make this a magical winter wonderland now. So you want mm, not your tiny brush, something, this would be a time to use a soft round brush. 
this is this is a round one like this, but it's not soft. It's stiff. The best way to tell if it's soft tell is just just go up and push it on your push it on your picture. And if it really flops around, then you know that it's a soft brush. If it stays, let's see if this one is like this one. Well, I guess you can't tell, but this one's stiff. This one's real soft. It just so either one, either way. And what you're going to do is we want to be generous with the snow. No one wants see-through snow. Like you don't want transparent on your, on your, you're going to want your white to be thick. If you want a little bit of light blue in there. So say I have this spot where almost all my paint is gone. All my light blue is paint is almost gone. If I want, I can take this white and put it on the edge of that where it's going to get a little tiny bit blue, but not very much. And let's do this area here first, because I want to come back and put some yellow on there. So right in front of the door, you can kind of swish a little sideways and really put some snow here. This area and this area, they're going to be a little darker. So either we'll paint it in there a little darker or we just won't put any of the white there, but you, you know, and then on the trees, the thing you want to do is to put it with the way start at the top and you're just going to kind of plop it on. You're going to bring it down. In clumps, you don't have to cover all the light blue, but it'll probably be right along the edges of the green. If if your, if your green happens to be wet, just keep a brush, I mean, a cloth handy like this, and then just, just wipe your brush off. If you get a little green paint from here on it, just wipe it off and get more paint. You don't need to rinse your brush. You just need to get rid of the green. It's not gonna go away. So just, you wanna put it on there nice and thickly, nice and thick, thickly, I don't know. That, you can overlap the castle a little bit now because that's good. There. Um, I'm going to put a little extra on the top. I don't know, like maybe even right here. Oh, I gotta do these other trees. Probably the tops of the trees ought to have a little tiny bit of white up top. So that should be working. And then, and then if you want, you know, you can take a little of the not too not too blue but you know add a little a little tiny bit of blue to this and if we had a shadow from the lights on in the house it would probably go in kind of a diagonal but it would go right underneath the tree here so it's the nice thing about this picture is that the brown and the blue you can get away with just adding either more white or less white or more of the, the darker color and that you don't have to think about mixing it any more than that. You just mix the two things and you can, you can practice, you know, where the shading would go without having to think too much about how to make the color. It's just like, you're really gonna see that you're gonna put it on and you'd be like, that's too dark or it's not dark enough and you're just gonna add white, right? Um, what also would happen is that if that's happening with the, like it might even be darker, like right in here too, right up next to the house, but not right where the door is. And then on the outside of the tree. There, low here. 
All right. And then the other thing you're gonna to wanna to do is to put snow in the sky. And um, so with the snow, the thing you, it could be just that it's just starting to snow and you could put 10 dots in the sky and it will just look like it's just softly starting to snow unless you make them the size of an eraser head like the kids do and, and then it will look like it's snowing snowballs. The thing to do is to put your snowflakes everywhere. Obviously they're not gonna show much on the places that are white. Um, so choose places that are dark, and, but a little bit all over and that's how you'll make the snowflake show. And you can either use you know, the tip of your brush. Again, one that's a little stubby works pretty well um or you can use the back end of your brush if you have a little more patience like the wooden end and again i mean really the snow could be actually that's another thing but um i'll say that in a second so you get a little white like this and you just start putting it on you just can't it doesn't hold much paint so you have to keep getting more so i'll put some in the sky but i also want to put them in on my castle, I'm gonna look for some dark places. Let's see, I could even put it on, whoop, on my little windows. Putting snow on your painting is so great and you can only really do it when you're painting it's hard to do. It's not fun to do it if you're doing a drawing. So it's worth doing because it's fun. The other thing is this, is that if you vary the size of your snowflakes a little tiny bit, you can actually make it look like there's, you know, tier, you know um, there's depth to the atmosphere and where the snow is. And one of the ways to do it is to make some of them a little bigger you know, like I can make bigger snow, you know, like this size and then have little teeny tiny bits that are maybe fading away. And you, but you can also um, use the light blue or a light blue color for your um, snowflakes and that will make them look farther away too. I don't know if I can. It's the same thing you can do. I've seen the effect work pretty well when you do a sky um, with stars in it. And the thing is with stars is that you only put the white dots in the sky and you wanna clump them a little bit. But when you do snow, you want the snow to be all over your whole entire picture everywhere. And you want them to be kind of evenly spread out. Those are sort of the differences, I think, anyway. Okay. Oh, I'm going to put them down here, too, in my shadow. On the green. All right. So I think, I think that's it. I love this picture. I don't think I've ever done it with an adult group. So it's always been something I do in like 10, 10 minutes or 20 minutes. Um, it feels like oh. Whoville. <laughs> oh, oh, I know, but isn't it kind of like that? Look, oh gosh, they look awesome. Is it fun? I think it was a good one. Very, Very fun. fun. It was, oh, look at that. I'll oh, see that's nice. Look at it's neat to see the different colored skies because that really makes a difference. Okay, I'm gonna get ready. I'm gonna take a screenshot, ready? Um, All right, ready? When, oh, oh shoot. <laughs> just <laughs> my hand slipped. Okay. Cool. Uh, all right. All right. Ready? That's adorable. Oh, okay. One, <laughs> one, two, three. <laughs> Very cute. What? I didn't say. Thanks, Cheers, right, everybody. Well, bye. Bye. Thanks, Thanks again. Bye, bye, everybody. Bye, Sarah. Bye, Susan. Bye.